Before we begin the program, may we invite Professor Robbie Goh, Provost, Singapore University of Social Sciences, on stage for the welcome speech. Prof Goh, please. Mr. Lawrence Wong, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Professor Yustin Kwa, President, Economic Society of Singapore, distinguished speakers and guests. On behalf of the Singapore University of Social Sciences, SUSS, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the Singapore Economic Policy Forum 2022. This year, the Singapore University of Social Sciences is partnering with the Economic Society of Singapore to organize the forum. It's highly appropriate, therefore, that this year's focus is on economics and interdisciplinary studies for social good. SESS is perhaps unusual among universities in that its whole of university remit is to advance the social good, both in Singapore and abroad, through service, research, and teaching, including adult education and training. It's interesting that this year's theme returns us to an interdisciplinary approach. Interdisciplinary is, of course, a hot topic in education these days, it was at the heart of a curricular review that I was involved in at NUS a couple of years ago, and it's at the heart of the SUSS curricular review that we have just concluded and will launch next year. It's important to note, however, that interdisciplinary is not a modern invention, and we can learn much from the brilliant polymaths of classical and neoclassical times. This is true of some of the pioneers of economics, like Adam Smith and John Stuart Mill. And of course, it's interesting to note that in their time, it was called political economy, which is already a kind of multidisciplinary uh, yoking. Adam Smith, credited with coining the invisible hand of the market mechanism, lectured in rhetoric at Edinburgh University and philosophy at Glasgow, and was also interested in history and jurisprudence, and was awarded a Doctor of Laws by Glasgow University. Mill had an even wider range of interests, writing not just on political economy, but also moral philosophy, the issue of slavery, gender equality, the environment, and various other social issues. Much as Adam Smith's champion laissez-faire policies and the auto-regulatory mechanisms of the market, he was no blind believer in these. He insisted that certain aspects of human society could not just be left to the market, and education was one of these where Smith believed that, the winning, that winning market share and delivering a quality education were not entirely compatible. In such cases, intervention and regulation were required to ensure that the social good and education that fitted individuals to be good citizens was not compromised by profit motivations and ruthless market competition. Smith's major philosophical work, The Theory of Moral Sentiments, can also be seen as a philosophical supplement to his theory of market society insists that while competition of any sort, economic, sporting, political, can be fierce, it must be guided by the judgments that a fair and objective, what he called the impartial spectator, would make. The impartial spectator is likely to approve of the social passions, that's his term, that bring benefit to our fellow men, while being likely to strongly disapprove of the unsocial passions that lead to social divisions, hatred, and oppression. Mill, whose principles of political economy was as much a dominant text as Smith's Wealth of Nations, like Smith also believed that intervention was at times necessary and even essential. Here he was guided by his social and moral philosophy of utilitarianism, which, similar to Smith's moral philosophy, promoted the social passions in order to achieve the greatest good for society. There are important lessons or reminders to be had from these founding fathers of the modern discipline of economics. Firstly, the economic theories were not narrow and isolated, but were enriched by a wide range of other disciplines, by their knowledge of law, history, philosophy, what today we would probably call sociology, which didn't exist at that time, and others. Secondly, and relatedly, they never lost sight of the fact that economics had to serve society and the social good, that it had a noble moral purpose. For thinkers like Adam Smith and J.S. Mill, Theories could not be powerful and elegant in and of themselves in a mathematical or abstract way, but always had to focus on the human condition, on the individual within society. In a sense, Singapore has always sought to embed economic thinking within a holistic interdisciplinary perspective and with a firm eye on the ultimate social good. I think Adam Smith and J.S. Mill would have approved. Thus, the Forward Singapore exercise pursues our nation's future, not just on the economic front, which is pillar one, 
but simultaneously and connectedly through five other pillars of education, health and social support, the living environment or the, the habitat, environment and sustainability, and culture and identity. Another example, our current foreign exchange policies are geared towards combating inflationary forces that would have very serious detrimental effects on many in our society, particularly the least well-off. We are going through challenging times, with more challenging times ahead, if forecasts are accurate. And we have a long way to go and much to do as a society. We need to think outside of the disciplinary boxes to be innovative and flexible if we are able to, are to find solutions to the geopolitical, economic and social challenges ahead. Above all, we need to pursue such solutions as a united people and community, as far as possible ensuring that no one gets left behind. Educational institutions have a significant part to play in all this. To take the SUSS example, with a part-time undergraduate enrollment that is larger than a full-time one, and with our extensive offerings and enrollments in continuing education and upskilling courses, SUSS plays a significant role in helping to raise the aspirations and standards of life of a significant part of the birth cohort. SUSS teaching and research focus on the social good, seek to provide knowledge and thought leadership that can further policy and practice in areas like social work, gerontology, environment and sustainability, community cohesion, and others. Some examples include the SUSS Nian Kongsi Social Impact Hub, which fosters training and research into ways to improve elder care, or the Center of Excellence for Social Good, which provides training for the staff of social service agencies, and also thought leadership for the charities and social services sector. Through our new interdisciplinary curriculum, SUSS seeks to train new generations of graduates who will be able to think flexibly and innovatively in order to address the social issues that we will face in the years to come. It is my hope that SUSS and the other universities will be able to continue partnerships with the ESS and government agencies to provide the educational and research programs needed to tackle the major challenges ahead, as well as to strengthen the cohesion and empathy in our society. So let me once again thank ESS for partnering with SUSS for this year's forum and DPM for kindly agreeing to grace the occasion and to address us. I wish all speakers and participants a fulfilling and meaningful series of discussions today and may it bear fruit in the work that you do in your respective organizations. Thank you.